So this is the weekly Sunday Mindful Awakening meditation class that has gone totally virtual. Uh, this used to be a class that was in person and online, and now, obviously, given the circumstances that we're all in, it's become a fully virtual class. And um, I'm so happy to be able to connect with you all in this way. It's really, really meaningful to me. And there's just endless gratitude for my online community. Um, for anyone who wants to, there is an option to donate towards this class and the links are in the description. And yeah, is there anything else? I think that's it. So I'd love to dive in. Um, again, thank you for being here with me. And we're gonna explore some unconditional support, grounding, and safety today. And I know that there is a lot of fear and anxiety right now, a lot of fear and anxiety. And even for those of us that are, you know, have a lot of kind of tools for mindfulness and self-compassion and, you know, we have a lot of resiliency, even, even folks who are really kind of feeling mostly okay or even great during this time, there's still just an undercurrent of anxiety and fear that you can't help but feel. Now, I, I think most people are experiencing s some level of fear and anxiety right now. Um, and we don't wanna try to get rid of that. So anytime someone comes to me and they say, okay, I'm having this experience and I really need to get rid of it. Can you teach me some meditation? Can you give me some exercises? Can you, you know, guide me in something to get rid of this experience? The first thing that I say is, well, what you resist persists. And when we're trying to get rid of something, usually it's actually just getting bigger. Usually it's intensifying. Also, when we're trying to just get rid of something, maybe we're trying to get rid of our anxiety or our fear, we are not honoring that part of ourselves, that part of ourselves that is anxious and afraid. We're saying, this part of me doesn't deserve acknowledgement. This part of me doesn't deserve love. This part of me doesn't deserve you know, acceptance or compassion because this part of me is afraid and this part of me is anxious and that's not convenient. So on one hand, the resistance to get rid of our fear and our anxiety leads to more. So anyone who's ever had an anxiety attack or a panic attack, you know, it's like the, the, the tension in the chest and the heat rising and the stomach starts twisting and the mind is going and it's, oh no, oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna go into this panic attack or we're gonna, how are we gonna be able to go to work today? Or how am I gonna be able to go pick my kid up from school if I'm having a panic attack? Oh, what's wrong with me? I'm broken. And then the body is getting more in intensely tangled with the thoughts. And before we know it, we're just completely freaked out right that a lot of that is the resistance to the experience because we're using all this energy to stop the thoughts we're using all this energy and tension to try to get rid of the uncomfortable sensations in the body and it just gets more and more intense so one of the tools is to kind of deconstruct the experience into its pieces. And I've taught a lot about that and I'm not gonna get into that today. That is one option though, to actually go into it in a mindful way, using a lot of resource and not getting overwhelmed, but actually going into it and finding acceptance through directly encountering the feeling of fear or anxiety. So that's one path and it's a great one. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. Um, the other path is to choose to lean away from the fear and the anxiety, but this is not trying to get rid of it and it's not squashing it, it's not resisting it. It's also not um, excluding that part of self from love and compassion. It's just choosing to point attention elsewhere. And so that's what we'll do tonight. We'll be pointing attention elsewhere. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna still experience some fear or anxiety. It also doesn't mean that the mind won't create thoughts. It doesn't mean that there won't be uncomfortable sensations. 
all of that's part of being human. We're just gonna choose to incline towards what's feeling grounded and supportive and safe. And I'm gonna give you a guided meditation, visualization to do that. So again, when you are experiencing this fear and this anxiety around what's happening right now in the world, around um, loved ones, around your own health, around finances, around how other people aren't social distancing the way that you want to, around how you want people to call it physical distancing, not social distancing, because that's better and nobody will do it or <laughs> whatever it is, right? Like whatever the problem is. Um, we're not gonna try to get rid of that part of self. Because when we resist it, when we push it down, it just gets bigger. And part of the reason it gets bigger, in my opinion, is that we are not honoring and loving and seeing, really seeing and loving these parts of self. There's a reason why you're scared and anxious. A part of you is really afraid. And that's t t totally reasonable given the situation right now. So we can love these parts of self and have compassion for these parts of self. And at the same time, choose not to believe those thoughts or get lost in those emotions. Because ultimately, right now, in this moment, I'm gonna guess that everybody who's watching this live video right now, in this moment, right now, right now, is safe. I'm gonna guess that everyone watching this right now is okay. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen in five minutes or in five days or in five years, but right this second, you're okay. There's so much power in that. And you'll hear, hear any of the great spiritual teachers talk about that. That in the now, this moment right here, there is no problem. Now your mind's gonna immediately start saying, yeah, well, whatever, you don't know how much money I have in my bank account or you know, how you know, I, my, my brother's got a dry cough or you know, how I haven't been able to leave the house and I don't, I don't live with anyone and I'm really lonely. And I hear all that and I have my list too <laughs> and I get it. But in this moment right now, right here, none of those things are like solid and real and tangible in this moment, this breath, right here. So a lot of you know that um, I, I have chronic illnesses and I deal with chronic pain. The only time I suffer is when I get in a space of, is this gonna go on forever? And what's it gonna look like in five years? And what am I not going to get or what am I gonna lose as a result of being sick? That's when I suffer. I don't suffer when I'm just sitting there with a body that hurts. It's just pain. Even if it's a lot of pain, it's just pain. It is only when my mind gets in there and starts telling me stories about what it means to be someone that's sick and how that affects my relationship or my chance to have a family or my career. That's a big one for me because I got really, really sick right around the time um, that uh, my book came out and I was getting a lot of acting work and I was like, this isn't fair. Everything's going so well, why do I have to be sick? And that's what made me suffer. It was the fear of what that was going to mean, that I wasn't gonna be able to do the things I loved, that I wasn't gonna be able to serve people in the way that I wanted to. It wasn't the actual pain. It wasn't, it's not the actual illness. It's all of the thinking about and the agonizing about what's gonna happen in the future. And for many people, it could be also what's happened in the past, right? Like I'll use myself as an example again, like why did I drink and do drugs all those years? I screwed up my body. Or why didn't I have like a grown up when I was a teenager tell me that I needed to go and get like PTSD therapy, I needed to go get trauma therapy. Why didn't I have that, right? Like I can start going into that space of like the past as well. And so whether I'm in, going into the future of what I'm not gonna get or what I'm gonna lose as a result of illness or going to the past about sort of the, the grief and the anger about what I didn't get or what I did wrong, either way, that's where I get into the suffering. When I'm just sitting right here, right now, 
with this body that yes hurts that yes has illness but i'm just here in this moment everything is absolutely perfect and i'm not just saying that i, I it's truly my experience and so if right now that is not feasible for you that experience or that belief then you can borrow it from me you can borrow that experience and that belief from me and just try it on just 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 try it out you don't have to um, take on this belief system you don't have to take on this philosophy but just see what does it feel like if just for the next whatever it is that we're together the next 40 minutes I stopped believing that I had a problem I stopped believing that I was gonna lose everything or that all of this stuff I was looking forward to is not going to happen or that I'm uh, that I'm alone and lonely all of those things are real in one sense but another sense how much suffering could you put down if you weren't holding on to all of that so again if that's not feasible if that's not realistic for you right now I totally understand I totally hear you and I invite you to just borrow my experience, borrow my philosophy around this, even just for the next 40 minutes. And maybe just lean into, incline towards the belief that you are safe and that you are loved and that you are seen and that everything in this moment is okay. Anyone who knows me, anyone who's worked with me as a client or in a, in a class setting knows that I've gone through some really tough stuff in my life. And that's before I was dealing with like daily pain. Like, it, it, yes, I'm a cisgender white woman. So <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've been through some tough stuff, but I have had a fair amount of privilege nonetheless. But yeah, some tough stuff on my own, very young as a young teen, growing up with an alcoholic father, you know, who died from the disease of alcoholism, um, you know, dealing with family on both sides who are, were all severely traumatized and many of them dealing with drug addictions and alcohol abuse and, um, you know, mental illness and trauma, 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 really, at the end of the day. And that has informed, you know, so much about my life, right? And... I can tell you, even though there's been devastating heartbreak and loss in my life, this philosophy of in this moment everything is okay, I, I fully know that. And I know it because I've practiced it. So just like you could practice the piano or a new language or whatever you're learning right now while you're in quarantine, I'm hearing about people like learning all kinds of things because they have the time. Whatever it is you learn, you know, you. You take time, you practice, and you get better at it. You can't just, mo most people can't just sit down and suddenly be like a master pianist. There might be a few like really, really lucky people. I wish I could do that. <laughs> um, so there might be a few people that, that can do that, but for the most part, you know, you need to practice to be a piano pianist, certainly to be a master pianist. Same thing with this knowing of in this moment, I am completely okay, I am completely loved, I am completely seen, I am completely safe. You can practice that. You can practice dropping into this moment of safety and love and being held. And as you practice that, you start to have more and more insight into that. It begins to become real for you. It begins to become a way of life. And that doesn't mean that you'll never suffer. I've been practicing this a long time and sometimes I suffer because I'm a human being. <laughs> and also because I'm really interested in growing and so I'm always getting into <laughs> new and interesting situations that, um, that bring up feelings, you know? And then I get attached to the thoughts related to the feelings and then I suffer um, but with these tools and with this practice it doesn't last very long these days and so if I can do it 
if where I come from and what I come from and I can still be at a place today where most of the time I recognize that I'm completely okay and there's no problem, then you can do that too. And what better time than in the midst of a pandemic? What better time than when you're stuck in your house alone? What better time than when you're stuck in the house with a significant other that you're having a really challenging time with or with a parent or a sibling? What better time than when you can't get what you want? Oh, next week, actually next week I might do a class on craving because I know that um, there's a lot of craving going on right now because we can't get what we want. Whether that's like our favorite brand of toilet paper or any toilet paper at all. Um, or, you know, we can't go to the grocery store and get what we need because perhaps we're autoimmune compromised or maybe we're sick and we're being responsible and staying home. Or we can't see the person that we just started dating that we're really into. And it's just like, oh God, I just want to see them. So what better time to start to realize that you are actually okay in this moment? That you are loved in this moment, that you are seen in this moment. Then right now, when the shit's hitting the fan, this is the time. It's like I learned to drive on a three in the tree, um, big red truck. And my boyfriend at the time was like, you learn to drive this, you're gonna be able to drive anything, <laughs> right? So practice now. Practice the deep belief, the deep knowing that you are safe in this moment. And this doesn't discount all the ways that things are challenging and all the things that are really painful. That can all be true and you are okay in this moment. Okay, that's what I have to say about that. Thanks for listening. Let's do some practice together. The first thing I want to invite you to do is to find a posture that's comfortable and feels safe for you. Okay? So if you really tune into it, you'll notice in this position I feel actually more safe. So I want you to find what is the position, what is the posture that makes your body really just be able to soften and release. my giant water <laughs> okay so it might be that you're sitting like I am it may be that you're standing if that's what works for your body or you could be lying down now sitting could be in a chair it could be on the floor it could be in full lotus it could be with your legs up <laughs> whatever works for you find a position that's gonna work for you and then we'll aim to maintain this posture for the practice. Of course, if you need to move, if you need to shift, you do that. You do whatever you need to do for your body so that your body feels good. Okay. So go ahead and close your eyes if you'd like. You can, of course, practice with your eyes open if you want to. I'm going to kind of do half and half. And I want you to start by just drawing your attention to some place in your body that feels okay right now. And I just want you to notice that even if you're having a really tough time today, there's at least one place in your body that feels okay. So I want you to draw your attention there. And it could be a place that actually feels really good but it can absolutely just be a neutral place or a place that doesn't feel as bad as the rest. So maybe it's your feet or your hands. Or maybe it's some other sensation within your torso or your face. I just want you to find a spot that's okay, just so that you can recognize that even if there's just all kinds of craziness going on, I can find something in my body that's okay. I've shared this story a million times, but I'll share it again. A number of years ago, I was being rolled into an ER and I was in just unbelievable amounts of pain. Not the worst pain of my life, but pretty bad. And I was also very emotionally distraught. And because of this practice, I was able to find something that didn't hurt, something that wasn't totally freaked out. And that was my feet. 
and I just put my attention on my feet as they rolled me along and put me in the room. And the suffering eased. The suffering went away. And I was just feeling my feet. There was all the other stuff happening. The beeping and the, the worried partner and the pain and the people in and out asking questions and the foggy mind and all of that. But my feet were fine. And I just kept coming back to that. And then they gave me some really good drugs, <laughs> which did the trick. <laughs> so you can just find a place, like for example, your feet, that feels totally okay right now. And this starts to give you a glimpse into this idea of you are okay in this moment. In this moment, you are okay. So focusing here on this place in your body for just another moment. Let's also take a moment to breathe together, okay? Do some breathing. We're gonna have a nice deep inhale on a five count and a nice slow exhale on an eight count. And I'll count us through it. We'll all do it together. And I also want you to just notice and feel into that sense of, oh, I'm with all these people on a Facebook live stream and we're all just sitting here breathing together. Just thinking about that actually brings up emotion for me. Just kind of opens my heart. So let's do it. We'll inhale two, three, four, five. Exhale two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale two, three, four, five, and exhale, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And allowing your breath to go back to its own natural pace and rhythm. Breathing naturally. Just noticing any sense of calming through the body. Any sense of refreshing qualities in the body. Any sense of peace or calm in the body. Any sense of a crisp, fresh awakeness. Good. Now we'll start to invite some relaxation into the body. And again, because I know so many folks are really needing connection right now. Really needing connection. I want you to use every so often, just notice that as you're doing this practice, there's, right now it looks like 24 other people doing it with you. So I'm not gonna have you put a lot of attention on that, but just every so often, and right now as we start relaxing the body, I just want you to feel into that a bit. Oh, I'm here with these other people from all over the world, and we're all just relaxing together. How beautiful. So starting at your forehead, inviting the forehead to soften, smooth out, and relax. And moving down into the eyes and the little muscles around the eyes. Inviting relaxation in here. Really letting those eyes relax. And this is where closing the eyes might be really nice, just letting them go. And 
and softening down into the rest of your face and down into your mouth and your jaw. Allowing the mouth to drop open a little. Deeply relaxing into the jaw. So many of us hold tension and stress here. Just letting it go. It's okay. It's safe to relax. It's okay to let go. Inviting relaxation into the neck and the shoulders. Letting those shoulders drop. And if you're feeling a lot of tension in the shoulders, you might squeeze them up to your ears gently, not, not pushing anything, but just squeeze them up to your ears and then let them go. So just releasing a little extra tension from the shoulders. And then continuing that relaxation down both of your arms, feeling the arms relax. And letting that relaxation move all the way down into your hands. Your hands, every finger and each thumb relaxing, becoming heavy, released. And continuing down into the chest, relaxing all around your heart. Feeling the relaxation of the lungs with each exhale. Relaxing down into your solar plexus. And if at any time as we're relaxing the body, there's a spot that it feels like, oh, it would feel really nice to have some extra support there, you can just place a hand. Place a hand maybe on the solar plexus. We can feel a lot of fear and anxiety in the solar plexus. And so just breathing, softening, giving yourself a little extra support of your hand if that feels good. And then when you're done offering that extra support, you can just bring your hand back down to your lap or wherever your hands are resting. And continu continuing down into the abdomen, softening, releasing the stomach, imagining all the organs and the digestive system, and if you have a reproductive system, everything, just relaxing, releasing. Allowing yourself to receive relaxation through your body. And bringing your attention to the back body. Feeling into the back of the shoulders and the space between the shoulder blades. And inviting a relaxation and softening here. Letting go. Softening. And continuing to relax down into your mid-back, along the spine, into the muscles of the mid-back. And keep in mind that as you do this, you might start to become aware of all the places that you're not relaxed. That's totally normal. And what I want to invite you to do is to just keep bringing attention to where you are relaxed where relaxation is available. And if there's an area of tension that won't soften, just soften around that area, letting go of resistance. So like I said at the beginning in my talk, what you resist persists. And so can you release that resistance to the tension or the pain or the anxiety or the fear or any other uncomfortable sensation in the body as you invite relaxation? It's okay that that stuff's there. There's nothing wrong with those parts of you. Nothing wrong with you. We're embracing all parts of self by relaxing where we can, 
and softening around the areas where we can't. And moving down into the lower back and inviting relaxation here. Not getting to my regular yoga classes and not being great at doing yoga at home. I have a lot of sensation in my lower back lately. Like I said before, the suffering comes if I start getting real in my mind about that. The pain is just a sensation. That doesn't mean I don't want to take action and do some yoga at home. But getting into fear of future or regret of the past, that doesn't actually help my lower back pain. It actually makes it worse. And so right now, if you're experiencing a lot of sensation in your lower back, I invite you to just soften where you can and allow the other sensations to be there. It's okay. Continuing to relax down into your hips, into your seat, to the pelvic area. Maybe invite any unneeded clenching in the pelvic area, inviting it to release. Maybe softening around the tailbone. Even just thinking about softening around the tailbone creates a lot of release and relaxation. And continuing down into both of your legs. Softening, relaxing, releasing. And into your feet. Good. So just noticing now what is relaxed. Maybe more than was before, because we've brought some intention to relaxation. Noticing where is the body released and relaxed. And as you do this, you might notice a few spots that you're unconsciously tightening up and you don't need to. And if you run into one of those spots, you can just invite some relaxation. And then let go of the results. Maybe that part of the body relaxes, maybe it doesn't. Okay, now again, you can have your eyes open if you like, but I would suggest that you close them for this portion. It's probably gonna be easier to drop into this practice with the eyes closed. But again, that's up to you. So here from this relaxed place, I want you to notice the feeling of sitting, standing, or lying on whatever it is you're sitting, standing, or lying on. So I'm feeling my butt on this chair, and the chair has a little bit of a bounce to it that I can notice even though I'm sitting still. And then I notice my back on the back of the chair, gently pressing in. Notice my thighs on the chair, pressing down. And I notice my feet on the floor. My feet are in socks and they're on the carpet. And there's some pressure, just gentle pressure, bringing them down into the floor. And so I want you to notice wherever your body is making contact with whatever you're sitting or lying on or standing on. 
and just notice how it's supporting you. So this chair is supporting me right now. I'm pretty sure within the next 15, 20 minutes, it's not going to break. It's probably gonna stay relatively solid underneath of me, supporting me. And so I want you to tune into that for yourself. Just notice how whatever you're sitting, standing, or lying on is there supporting your body. Probably for the next little bit here while we practice, it's unconditionally supporting your body. Most likely, Chris is not going to run in here and pull this chair out from under me. So this chair is unconditionally supporting me right now. Just like your bed or your meditation cushion or your couch is unconditionally supporting you right now. Receiving that support. Receiving the unconditional support of your bed or your couch or your chair or your cushion. Now I want you to notice how the floor of the room that you're in is supporting whatever it is that you're sitting or lying on. Very unlikely the floor is going to go anywhere in the next 15 minutes. It's unconditionally supporting you. Notice that. You are supported by the floor. And then notice how that floor is supported by the structure that you're in, the building. The floor is part of that building and that building is supporting you. Unconditionally supporting you right now. You're supported. And that building has a foundation that is on and in the earth. Just taking a moment to consider that foundation of the building that you're in, that concrete and metal and whatever else the foundation of your building is made of. And that foundation is supporting the structure that you in, are in, which is supporting the floor, which is supporting whatever it is that you're sitting or lying down on. I want you to feel into this support. As we move deeper, I want you to notice what does it feel like in my body to be supported in this way. And your mind may be starting to tell you the ways that you are not supported. I want you to notice the ways that you are. Whatever you're sitting or lying on, the floor beneath that, the building that that floor is inside of, the, sh the foundation of that building. And finally, the earth. The earth is supporting you right now. And for some of us who live in certain areas, the floor can get a, the earth can get a little shaky sometimes. But it's not shaky right now. And even when it is shaky, it's usually only shaky for a short period. So let's just say that the earth is unconditionally supporting you. And I want you to choose right now to believe that, to
to believe that you are unconditionally supported by the earth. And I want you to notice how it feels in your body to believe that you are unconditionally supported. Anytime you start to get pulled into the mind, anytime you start to get pulled into fear or anxiety or all the ways you're not supported, I want you to come back to, in this moment, you are unconditionally supported by the earth. There is nothing you have to do to deserve that support. No hoops you have to jump through to earn that support. It is yours unconditionally. It is your birthright to be supported by the earth. I want you to keep coming back to that idea and then dropping into that feeling. That feeling of being unconditionally supported just as you are. Just as you are. You don't have to fix anything about yourself to get this unconditional support. And as you reconnect with that idea, letting go of whatever thoughts are coming in about random things or fear or anxiety or anger or anything else, as you return to that idea, I want you to then drop into the body. <sighs> How does it feel in your body to be unconditionally supported? Be with that. Receive that fully. Now there's something that is delivering you into the support of the earth. The unconditional, simple support of the earth. There's no metaphysical belief involved with knowing that you're supported by the earth. That's what's underneath of us. That's what's supporting us. And there's something that's delivering you into that support constantly and is also unconditional for as long as we can imagine anyway. And that is gravity. Gravity is grounding you right now. Is helping you to receive the support of the earth. And so you can feel gravity right now, right? Like your arms are hanging down. They're not floating up. They're being drawn down by gravity. As is the rest of your body. Now you're using your muscles and your spine to sit up perhaps, or maybe you're lying down, in which case you can really feel that gravity just whoo, pulling everything down. But even if you're sitting up, Everything that's not needed for sitting up is being drawn down into support by gravity. So 
So I want you to start to feel that. I want you to start to feel gravity. So you hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm, it's everything's so crazy right now. I'm so anxious, I'm afraid, I'm all over the place. I really need to get grounded. Well, that's happening all the time. That's available to you all the time. You have the opportunity to be grounded any moment that you want to recognize what gravity is doing. This grounding isn't because you meditate every day. It's not because you're super spiritual. It's not because, you know, you read the right list of 10 things to do to be grounded. It's because gravity is just giving you grounding for free. Unlimited all the time. So feel that. Feel this gift of gravity, this grounding energy of gravity. Again, nothing to buy into or believe here. This is just what's happening. Gravity is drawing us down. The earth is supporting us. So feel that gravity. Take a moment here. You are grounded. A sense of groundedness is available to you now. Now I just want you to notice that combination, the support of the earth and the grounding energy of gravity. I want you to notice how in this moment you are grounded and you are supported. In this moment you are safe. The support of the earth and the grounding energy of gravity are offering you a true sense of safety right now. You don't have to work for it. It's here now. You're supported. You're grounded. You are safe. Surrender into that support. Let gravity do what it does. Let go into this. Allow yourself to receive. Trust that in this moment, you are okay. In this moment, everything is okay. In this moment, you are safe. Beautiful work. Take a moment and bring some gentle movement into your body. 
Maybe just some movement in the spine, some rolling of the shoulders, some opening and closing of the fists, the hands, rolling of the ankles, the neck, just gentle, gentle, sweet movement in whatever way feels good. <laughs> 